Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the FPX Nickel uh, YouTube channel. I'm the company's president and CEO, Martin Turen, and I'm joined today by our VP Projects, Andrew Osterlo. Andrew, good to see you. Good morning, Martin. Good to talk to you today. So we're here today to talk about a news release the company has put out on February 1st, announcing the initiation of a scoping study looking at uh, hydrometallurgical treatment of our high-grade nickel concentrate so that that nickel concentrate to go, can go into the production of nickel sulfate for electric vehicle batteries. So we're quite excited to initiate that work today and, and to talk to you about um, what that process may look like. So before we get started on some of the downstream considerations, uh, we'll talk a little bit about you know, aware white mineralizations, mineralization rather, and some of the advantages it may hold for production of sulfate for those batteries. So Andrew, I'll pass it over to you here. Yeah, thanks, Martin. I, I think we're seeing this, this opportunity presented by aware white as, as somewhat unique in this space and really gives a, a, you know, some strategic advantages to be able to uh, overall design a much simpler process, um, which will in turn have a reduced carbon footprint. And we'll also simplify the, the supply chain from nickel units and ground to nickel units going into, into the EV battery space. So I think the real crux of this is the mineralization itself outright. Um, NI3FE is about 75% nickel by mineral content, which really lends the opportunity for the concentrator to produce a very high grade nickel concentrate, something in the order of 60 to 65% nickel. Um, we've, we've demonstrated through preliminary testing that this uh, concentrate is readily leachable, putting the solution, uh, putting the nickel units into solution in a high quality PLS, which allows us to utilize a, um, a fairly standard and simple so solution extraction and crystallization stage uh, to produce NiSO4 for the, uh, the PCAM manufacturers. Comparing this to the typical sulfite concentrates out there, um, you know, they're, they're typically much lower grades in that sort of 10 to 20% nickel, um, which really requires an intermediate stage of, of smelting and, and converting. Um, so not only does this result in a more complex process, it typically also revol involves more logistics uh, and, and often more players in the supply chain and changes of hands. So really a more complex supply chain um, with a longer time to market from nickel units in ground to nickel units going into a battery. Uh, I, the other common form of nickel going into the, uh, the space here, potential form is, is the laterites. And this, this is uh, um, you know, a, a well-demonstrated technology, but uh, you know, a lot of process complexity, um, a, a fairly rigorous um, a set of pressure oxidation conditions and, and dealing with the grades they're dealing with, you know, typically in that sort of 1% range coming out of the ground, you know, much, much larger footprints and, and bigger scale of operation um, as compared to our, our high grade feed going into that. So some real distinct advantages for our right going into nickel sulfate. Yeah, and, and what we see is that, that allows this operation, or this conceptual operation at Baptiste to have that closer integration into the downstream of the EV battery market. You can see that Baptiste is quite you know, strategically positioned here in North America, uh, relatively cl close to the, uh, to the West Coast. Um, so with multiple options between truck, rail, and ocean freight to deliver uh, product to the end consumers, those would be the battery plants. Um, which are sort of dotted here, both in the United States and Canada, either currently operational or currently in construction or development. Um, and we expect the number of those battery plants to expand over time. So we see a, a very large audience for our nickel units. And again, the ability to bypass smelting here is fundamental in, in allowing for that deeper and closer integration in producing high value products for that downstream of the EV battery market. Now, Andrew, nickel sulfate can typically either be produced in crystal or in solution form. We're going to be looking at both of those options. And I wonder if you could walk us through a little bit of the, the difference or some of the considerations in going either in the crystal route, which is shown here in option one, or solution being uh, option two. Yeah, yeah, those are the two most common forms for uh, nickel units entering into the EV battery space. And, and we really have a fair bit of flexibility to target either of those products. And, and really the, the, the right solution for Baptiste is, is a strategic one depending on where that hydromet refinery is located. So option one explores the opportunity of locating or co-locating that facilities at the Baptiste project site or somewhere off site. Um, in that case, we'd produce nickel sulfate crystals, which would then be transportable to the, uh, the PCAM plant to actually uh, um, uh, enter, uh, to make the battery materials themselves. 
Um, however, recognizing there, there's a potential strategy and multiple um, different types of battery materials um, required to produce these PCAM materials, um, there's also a very strong opportunity to ship the very high grade uh, nickel concentrate to a, a hydromet facility co-located with the PCAM, PCAM plant itself, and in which case we would produce nickel sulfate in solution form, which would then be um, you know, directly pipeable into the, uh, the, the chemical plant to produce the PCAM material there. So really the key here is flexibility and ability to adapt and select the right flow sheet for the, uh, the strategy selected for the project. Um, and we'll, we'll chase down both options in terms of the engineering studies and the test work, which will allow us to make the, the right strategic decision uh, when information is in hand. Yeah, thanks, Andrew. So we, we expect to have that scoping study, which is, again is an internal scoping study completed in the second quarter of 2022. We will be able to disclose some of those uh, conclusions as to which of these two options is, 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 is best suited to us. But I think the, the thing to highlight here is the, uh, the unique advantages we, th we, we see with wear-white mineralization to produce a very high value, very clean product with a low CO2 footprint that can go into that downstream in that EV battery market. And we'll be uh, sure to, to uh, record another video when that study is completed to, to talk about the results. Thanks again for tuning in to our, our video today. Uh, any questions, please send them directly to us. We can be reached over email at ceo at fpxnickel.com or just leave some questions or comments below this video. Thanks again. Take care. Thanks.